ancient in indian history today we are going to take the topic of post mauryan period in the post mauryan period today's topic is foreign kingdoms in the previous videos we discussed the indian kingdoms indian kingdoms of that period they were sungas kanvas satavahanas and sangam kingdoms so all this indi indigenous indian kingdoms were completed in the previous videos now we are going to take foreign kingdoms foreign kingdoms of that period were the foreign kingdoms first foreign kingdom indo greeks indo greeks after this indo greeks sekas after this sekas next to parthians after the parthians next to kushanas so now we are going to discuss these four kingdoms first we will come to the point of the indo greeks indo greek kingdom it was the first foreign kingdom ruled northwestern india they ruled northwestern india during the post mauryan period post mauryan period that was from 200 bc to 300 ad during this period indo greeks they ruled northwestern india after the decline of the mauryans after the decline of the mauryans western india and northwestern india fell under the control of the indo greeks and foreign kingdoms remaining other foreign kingdoms coming to the point of the indo greeks who were the indo greeks indo greeks were the first foreign rulers they ruled indian subcontinent some areas of the northwestern india they came to india settled in the northwestern india with the name of the bactrians they also called as bactrians indo greeks were also called as bactrians because they were the hellenistic ancestry ancestry hellenistic ancestry because of hellenistic ancestry ancestor they were called as bactrians or indo greeks bactrians or indo greek indo greeks <coughs> coming to the point of the what is bactria what is bactria bactria is a hindu kush akshas hindu kush hindu kush akshas and hirat so these three areas were called as bactria these three areas were called as bactria so they came to india from this area they they are also called as yavanas in the indian literature bactrians were called as yavanas in the indian sanskrit literature yavanas if you watch back for in what is that uh, indian movies those who are belongs to this area uh, they they are called as back uh, yavanas especially in the movies and this indo greeks they belongs to the ammonian ammonian tribal people ammonian tribal people Am ammonian tribals they were the ammonian tribes and they declared independence indo greeks they declared independence after the decline of seleucid dynasty after the decline of seleucid dynasty this seleucid dynasty was established by the seleucus nicator seleucus nicator he established seleucid dynasty after the aso after the alexander alexander army general seleucus nicator he established seleucid dynasty in the western and this was a he established at 
Syria. They established at Syria. Syria kingdom is called as Seleucid dynasty. So after this decline of this Seleucid dynasty, Indo-Greeks they be declared independence. Indo-Greeks declared independence. Coming to this point, during the post-Mauryan period, the foreign kingdoms were the Indo-Greeks, Sekas, Parthians, Kushanas. Among them, Indo-Greeks were the first. They ruled northwestern India. They came to India from Bactria. They are also called as Bactrians. They are also called as Bactrians. Because of the, how the Hellenistic ancestry, they are called as uh, Greeks. Hellenistic means Greek, Greek ancestry. That means they were the descendants of the Greeks. That's why they are called as Indo-Greeks. Bactria means Hindu Kush area, Oxus area, Herat area. This area is called as Bactria. They declared in they belongs to the Ammonian tribe. They declared independence after the decline of the Seleucus Nicator Seleucid dynasty. They are called as Yavanas in the Indian literature. Indian Sanskrit literature, they were called as Yavanas. Yes, coming to this point. Founder of this dynasty, founder of Indo-Greek dynasty was Euthydemus. Sorry, Origen. Origen was Euthydemus. Origen of this dynasty, Euthydemus. Euthydemus, he was origin of this dynasty. And founder of this dynasty, Founder Demistrius. Demistrius, he was the founder of this dynasty. Greatest king of this dynasty, greatest king and very famous king of this dynasty, Menander. After the Demistrius, Menander. First greatest were the Demistrius. After the Demistrius, very famous ruler, Menander. And the last ruler of this dynasty, last king of this dynasty, he was called as Heliokins. Heliokins. He was last ruler of this dynasty. The Indo-Greeks, they ruled from Sialkot, capital of the Indo-Greeks. Capital. Sialkot or Sakala. This is also called as Sakala. Sialkot or Sakala was the capital of this dynasty. And what is the importance of Indo-Greeks? Indo-Greeks, they introduced gold coins in India. Indo-Greeks, they introduced gold coins in India. That means, introduction of the gold coins, these gold coins are called as dinars. Their gold coins are called as dinars. Introduction of the gold coins means earlier there were gold coins in India like Nishka and Pana. These were the gold coins. Earlier gold coins were there in India, continued in India. But in India the gold coins and the introduction of the Indo-Greeks gold coins are different. Indo-Greeks they introduced gold coins by striking the name of the ruler and also chronology. We know name of the ruler and also chronology of the ruler of that period. That is like that uh, they introduced gold coins in India. That is one thing. And also another important thing of this period. Another important thing of this period. They introduced Gandhara school of art in India. Gandhara school of art. Indo-Greek. Art is called as Gandhara school of art. And another one, another one, they introduced Hellenistic art, art in India. Hellenistic art, that means Greek art was introduced in India. This Gandhara school of art, patronized by the Kanishka later period, patronized by the Kanishka, it is completely related to the Mahayana Buddhism. In the Mahayana Buddhism, Buddha looks like Apollo God. That means Buddha looks like, looks like a Greek Veera. Buddha looks like a Greek Veera with the wrinkled muscles. They gave important for the 
muscles of this mother scola fart this is the importance of the indo greeks indo origin of the indo greeks was the euthydemus founder of the indo greek dynasty demistrius demistrius he was the very famous ruler very uh, great king but after the demistrius next great king, great king was menander last king was heliochins capital sialkot or sakala they introduced gold coins these, these were the dinars in india later period these gold coins were continued in india by the gupta rulers even they also introduced gandhara school of art and hellenistic art these are the importance of the indo greeks after this after this we will discuss about the one by one ruler there are two rulers to discuss one is demistrius another one is one is demistrius another one is menander indo greeks demistrius we discuss that he was founder of the indo greek dynasty in india demistrius he was founder of the indo greek dynasty in india he was son of euthydemus demistrius he was son of euthydemus 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 was the origin of that kingdom origin of the indo greeks so according to the hathigumpa inscription hathigumpa inscription says that what hathigumpa inscription says hathigumpa inscription was issued by kalinga karavela that we know so according to this inscription demistrius he invaded on pataliputra he invaded on the pataliputra according to hathigumpa inscription he invaded on the pataliputra by this time the king of pataliputra pataliputra king was uh, the king of the pataliputra was pushyamitra sunga he defeated pushyamitra sunga pushyamitra sunga was defeated by the demistrius according to hathigumpa inscription which was issued by the karavela and demistrius he occupied some areas in india sindh punjab up to madhura sindh punjab up to the madhura region so these areas were occupied by the demistrius in india and demistrius he was the first ruler first foreign ruler who established kingdom in india first foreign ruler who established kingdom in india and coming to the point of the demistrius his contemporary rulers in india were the contemporary rulers in india were pushyamitra sunga pushyamitra sunga he was contemporary of demistrius sunga ruler he was sunga ruler pushyamitra sunga and satavahana king satakarni 1 satakarni 1 he was a satavahana ruler satavahana king and also kalinga kalinga king he was a karavela kalinga king karavela these three were the contemporaries of demistrius in india contemporaries of the demistrius in india he was the first indo greek ruler he issued gold coins he issued gold coins in india remember that he was the first indo greek ruler demistrius was the first indo greek ruler introduced gold coins in india according to the strabo 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 was a writer who wrote geography strabo wrote geography what strabo said strabo said that the victories of demistrius in india were greater than the alexander were greater than the alexander according to the strabo the 
victories of Demetrius in India were the greater than Alexander. So like that oh, Demetrius he was a very great ruler. We can come to that conclusion. After the Demetrius, after the Demetrius, next important ruler, next famous ruler of the dynasty was Menander. Menander. Menander, he was also called as Melinda. Menander, he was also called as Melinda. He ruled from Sakala. Melinda, he ruled from Sakala. Capital was Sakala. And his uh, name found in the coins. Menander, he was Indo-Greek ruler, issued large number of coins. He issued large number of coins. More number of coins issued by the Menander or Melinda in India. We find uh, many coins related to the Menander. And his titus, he was called as a Deva, Deva Vrata, Sudeva Vrata. Deva Vrata and Sudeva Vrata. He issued coins even on these names. Titles of him, Deva Vrata and Sudeva Vrata. One side he struck his title on the coin. One side struck the title. Other side he struck the Buddhist Dharma Chakra. He struck the Buddhist Dharma Chakra. He was a follower of Buddhism. He was a follower of Buddhism. Why he was a follower of the Buddhism? Coming to that point. He was a follower of the Buddhism because of Nagasena. Because of Nagasena. Nagasena, he was a Buddhist monk. Nagasena, he was a Buddhist monk. Nagasena, Buddhist monk. And he was contemporary of Sunga ruler Pushyamitra Sunga. Pushyamitra Sunga. What Pushyamitra Sunga did? Pushyamitra Sunga, he ordered to kill Buddhist monks. And he declared thousand dinars on the Buddhist monks. If That means uh, if any Buddhist ruler, if any person killed the Buddhist monk, and bringing the head of the Buddhist monk, he will be awarded 1000 dinars. He will be awarded 1000 dinars. That was declared by the Pushyamitra Sunga. So, because of that, Nagasena, he afraid of the Buddhist Pushyamitra Sunga. Nagasena went to the help of Minander. He went to the help of Minander or Milinda. Melinda, he was, the, he was knowing that Buddhism first time and he asked questions to the Nagasena. Minander or Melinda, he asked questions to the Nagasena. That composed as a book called Melinda Panho. Melinda Panha. Melinda Panha, it was a questions of Melinda. Questions of Melinda. That dialogue between Nagasena and Melinda... Nagasena, the dialogue between Nagasena and Melinda composed as a Melinda Panha. After this, Minander, he invaded on the Pushyamitra Sunga. Pushyamitra Sunga was defeated by the Minander. Pushyamitra Sunga was defeated by the Minander. Since then, this Buddhist monk Nagasena lived in the court of the Minander. He lived in the court of the Minander. That was the story. So, Melinda also defeated Pushyamitra Sunga. His father, Demetrius, also defeated Pushyamitra Sunga. And this Melinda Panho book, Melinda Panho book was composed by Melinda Panha book was composed by Nagasena. Composed this in the Prakrut language. That was composed in the Prakrut language. 
అండ్ మిలింద పన్హా బుక్ కన్సిడర్డ్ యాజ్ అ బైబిల్ ఆఫ్ బైబిల్ ఆఫ్ బుద్ధిజం ఇట్ వాజ్ కన్సిడర్డ్ యాజ్ బైబిల్ ఆఫ్ బుద్ధిజం ఇట్ స్పీక్స్ అబౌట్ సోషియో ఎకనమికల్ కండిషన్స్ సోషియల్ కండిషన్స్ ఆఫ్ ది ఇండియా ఆఫ్ దట్ పీరియడ్ ఎకనమిక్ కండిషన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా ఆఫ్ దట్ పీరియడ్ అండ్ పొలిటికల్ కండిషన్స్ ఆఫ్ దట్ ఇన్ ఇండియా ఆఫ్ దట్ పీరియడ్ అండ్ ఆల్సో కల్చరల్ కండిషన్స్ సో ఇఫ్ యూ రీడ్ మిరింద పన్హ ఇట్ లుక్స్ లైక్ ఏ మిర్రర్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా ఇన్ సెకండ్ సెంచరీ బీసీ మిర్రర్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా ఇన్ సెకండ్ సెంచరీ బీసీ సో లైక్ దట్ మినాండర్ కాంటెంపరీ రూలర్ పుష్యమిత్ర శృంగ అండ్ ఆల్సో మినాండర్ హీ వాజ్ కాంటెంపరీ టు ది సాతవాహన కింగ్ సాతకర్ణి టు హీ వాజ్ ఆల్సో కాంటెంపరీ టు ది సాతవాహన కింగ్ సాతకర్ణి టు హీ వాజ్ ఆల్సో మెన్సండ్ ఇన్ ద అవధాన కల్పతరు మినాండర్ మెన్సండ్ ఇన్ ద అవధాన కల్పతరు అవధాన కల్పతరు దిస్ బుక్ వాజ్ రిటర్న్ బై క్షేమేంద్ర క్షేమేంద్ర హీ మెన్షండ్ అబౌట్ ది క్షేమేంద్ర మెన్షండ్ అబౌట్ ద మినాండర్ క్షేమేంద్ర మెన్షండ్ అబౌట్ ద మినాండర్ ఇన్ హిస్ బుక్ అవధాన కల్పతరు మినాండర్ హీ ఆల్సో ఇట్ హిస్ గ్రేట్నెస్ ద గ్రేట్నెస్ ఆఫ్ ది మినాండర్ వాజ్ ఆల్సో మెన్షండ్ అవర్ ఆల్సో written by the different writers like strabo strabo wrote about strabo wrote about minander and also plutarch plutarch also wrote about minander strabo plutarch and justin these scholars they mentioned about the greatness of minander mentioned about the greatness of minander and last king of this dynasty heliochus heliochus he was last ruler of this dynasty heliochus this is about indo greeks in the indo greeks the most important thing is indo greek founder was demistrius demistrius was the first indo greek ruler who occupied indian territories from what is that uh, afghanistan to madura area he went to up to the madura he established indo greek kingdom in india and he was the first foreign ruler ruled indian territories he was the first to indo greek ruler issued gold coins in india after that uh, minander minander he was the great king of that dynasty minander defeated pushyamitra sunga his father demistrius also defeated pushyamitra sunga and the most important thing milinda panha it was a book dialogue between nagasena and milinda this are their capital was sakala these are the things to remember and gandhara school of art hellenistic art introduction of the gold coins these are the important things to remember about the indo greeks after the indo greeks next we will come into the another another topic that is sekas 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 they came to india from central asia according to some historians they came to india from central asia sekas were also called as scythians Scythians. Sekas were also called as Scythians. These Scythians, Scythians, originally they were tribals. They were barbarians. They were tribals. Scythians, they used to invade on China frequently. They used to invade on China frequently. To escape, to protect China from the Scythians, Xiuang's tea, si yuang sti si yuang sti he constructed a great wall of china whenever he constructed great wall of china scythians they started to come to india scythians they started to come to india 
and they settled in the northwestern frontier provinces. They were ruled out from there by the Yuchi tribe. Yuchi tribe, Yuchi tribe, driven out Sekas from the, driven out Sekas from the China. But according to some opinions, Sekas they came to India from Central Asia, Central Asia. They came to India from Central Asia, and they settled at Northern India. They also settled at Northern India, Western India. Sekas were settled in Northern and Western India. Originally, Seka families were the five families. They were five families. One family ruled Afghanistan. One family they ruled Afghanistan. And uh, other family they ruled Punjab. Third one they ruled Mathura area. Mathura area. Fourth they ruled uh, Saurashtra and Maharashtra. Saurashtra and Maharashtra. Fifth they ruled uh, Central India. Central India. Originally these three were the weak rulers. These three were defeated by the Kushanas and Kushanas they established Kushana dynasty after defeating all these three rulers. Now the important one is these three rule, these two rulers are important to discuss. These two rulers are important to discuss. Coming to these two rulers, first to Maharashtra or Saurashtra. Maharashtra or Saurashtra. Maharashtra and Saurashtra. This Maharashtra and Saurashtra Sekas were called as Chhatrapas. Chhatrapas. Chhatrapa name has been taken from the Satrap. Satrap. Satrap is head of the head of the state according to the Persian literature. Persians they called Satrapi as a state and Satrapi is the head of the state. This might be the head of the states. They ruled from Nasik. Nasik was their capital. It was the capital of this dynasty, Maharashtra dynasty. And this, uh, they ruled from the Nasik Origin of Bhumaka. Bhumaka was a founder of this dynasty. Bhumaka, he was founder of the Kshatrapa dynasty. And the greatest king of this dynasty, greatest king of this dynasty, he was Nahapana. Nahapana was the greatest king of this dynasty. And we, we have information only about the Nahapana. Because Nahapana, he was a contemporary of Gautami Putra Satakarni, Gautami Putra Satakarni of Satavahana king. Nahapana issued more gold coins in India. More gold coins in India. He issued the more gold coins in India. And he was mentioned in the Periplus of the Eritrean Sea. Nahapana mentioned as a ruler in Periplus of the Eritrean Sea. Periplus of the Eritrean Sea. This book was written by a unknown sailor. An unknown sailor, he wrote this book, Periplus of the Eritrean Sea. In this book, Nahapana was mentioned. And Nahapana so Saninla. Nahapana Saninla was Rishabadatta. Rishabhadatta. He was son in law of Nahapana. Along with Nahapana, Rishabhadatta, he played vital role to defeat many areas by the Nahapana. And also, Nahapana constructed some charitable trust with the help of the Rishabhadatta. This we are knowing from the Pandavaini caves. Pandavaini caves. From the Pandavaini caves, we are knowing that Rishabhadatta helped to the Nahapana for the establishment of the Buddhist charities 
and also for the victories, many victories. That is about the Nahapana. He was contemporary of Chandragupta Maurya. His son-in-law was Rishabhadatta. After this Nahapana, he was defeated by the Chandragupta, sorry, Gautami Putra Shatakarni. Nahapana was defeated by the Gautami Putra Shatakarni. Fell fleet in the hands of the Gautami Putra Shatakarni. Nahapana. After the defeat of Nahapana started the decline of Chatrapa kingdom. Almost Chatrapa kingdom, Maharashtra, Saurashtra, Chatrapa kingdom was declined. Gautami Putra Satakarni, he defeated Nahapana and he restruck the, he restruck the coins of Nahapana. Nahapana coins were restructured by the Gautami Putra Satakarni. That means uh, on the name of the Nahapana, he struck his name. Gautami Putra Shatakarni name was struck. That restruck coins were found at Jogal Tambi, Jogal Tambi Hoats. Jogal Tambi Hoats. 9,270 coins were found at Jogal Tambi. Yeah, this is about Chatrapas. That is Chaharata Chatrapas. Chaharata Sekas. Chaharata Chatrapas or Chaharata Sekas. After this, another family of the Sekas, those who ruled Vujjaini, from Vujjaini, they were called as Kardhamaka Satrava. Kardhamaka Satrapas or Kardhamaka Sekas. Kardhamaka Satrapas or Kardhamaka Sekas. Founder of this dynasty, Yasva Malik. Yeswa Malik, he was founder of the Kardamaka Seka dynasty. They ruled from Ujjaini, that is in Central Asia, sorry, Central India. They ruled in the Central India from Ujjaini. <coughs> so after the Nahapana, after the decline of the Chaharata family, Kardamaka Sekas, they raised to. They rise and they become independence. Last king of this dynasty, last king of this dynasty, Rudra Simha III. Rudra Simha III. And famous king of this dynasty, famous king of this dynasty, Rudra Damana. Rudra Damana. Rudra Damana I. And there is one uh, important thing to know about these Sekas. These Sekas were ruled from almost to 130 AD to nearly 400. This period. These Sekas were ruled. They were the contemporaries of Sekas were the contemporaries of the Satavahanas and also contemporaries of the Guptas. Contemporaries of Satavahanas and also contemporary of Guptas. Guptas. Here, the most important king was Rudradamana I. Rudradamana I, he issued, Rudradamana I issued Girnar or Junagar inscription. Girnar inscription or Junagar inscription was issued by the Rudra Damana. What is the main purpose of the issuing of this Junagar inscription? Originally, during the time of the Mauryan period, Sudarsana Lake, Sudarsana Lake was constructed by the Chandragupta Maurya by sending Vaishya Pushya Gupta. Vaishya Pushya Gupta. Vaishya Pushya Gupta, he was governor of the Junagar area. He constructed Ju Sudarsana Lake during the time of the Chandragupta Maurya period. And this Sudarsana Lake was ruined. That was in, while it was in the ruined position. Rudra Damana, he repaired that lake. Repaired. Just like... Uh, Telangana government which has been started Mission Kakatiya re 
built of the Kakratiyas lake, same like that. Uh, Rudradamana, he repaired the Sudarsana lake. So, after the repair of the Sudarsana lake, Rudradamana issued this Girnar inscription. So, this importance of the Girnar inscription, he mentioned about the Chandragupta Maurya. He also mentioned about the repair of Sudarsana lake. Uh, repair of the Sudarsana Lake. All these things were uh, mentioned here. This was the most important thing to discuss. And his capital was Ujjaini. He followed, Rudra Madhamana followed Hinduism. Rudra Damana, he followed the Hindu religion, that is Vedic religion. And he was called as Mahachatrapa. Rudra Damana, he was called as Mahakshatrapa. Mahakshatrapa. He issued coins also, Rudradamana. After the Rudradamana started the decline of this kingdom, there is no information of this kingdom. Even during the time of the Sekas, sorry, Gupta's period, Basana, we know that one ruler, Basana. Basana, he was Seka ruler. ruler. Basana defeated Ramagupta. And uh, he took away the wife of the Ramagupta. Seka ruler Basana took away the wife of the Ramagupta. Vikramaditya Chandragupta or Chandragupta too, he rescued the life of Dhruva Devi. Basana was killed. Basana was killed. That was mentioned in the Devi Chandragupta. And Chandragupta too. Chandragupta to or he was called as Vikramaditya Chandragupta. Why he was called as Vikramaditya Chandragupta? Vikramaditya Chandragupta, he defeated Sekas. That's why he was called as Sekari. And he occupied Ujjain. He shifted his capital from Pataliputra to the Ujjain. The Indian ruler, the Indian rulers who occupied Ujjain, they are called as Vikramaditya. Title, they, they will bore the title. They would bore the title Vikramaditya. Because Vikramaditya ruler, first ruler who defeated Sekas occupied Ujjaini. Since then, every ruler, those who defeated Sekas or those who occupied Ujjaini, they are called as Vikramaditya. Like this, uh, nearly 36 rulers are there in the Indian history called as uh, Sekas, uh, sorry, Vikramaditya. Next to, after this, Parthians. We have no much information about the Parthians. Much in, we have no much information about the Parthians. Parthians, they ruled northern India. They came to India from Iran, that is Persia. They came to India from the Persia. Vononian, Vononian was the founder of this dynasty. And the greatest ruler of this dynasty known to the history, only one ruler, he was called as Gondofernas. Gondofernas. During the Gondofernas period, during the Gondofernas period, St. Thomas, he came to India. St. Thomas, he came to India. St. Thomas, he was a Christian propagator, considered as a, one of the 12 disciples of, one of the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ. One of the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ, St. Thomas, he came to India. And St. Thomas, he constructed many churches in South India according to the Acts of Thomas, Acts of Thomas, this book, according to this book, Acts of Thomas, according to this book, Acts of Thomas, St. Thomas, he constructed many churches in India, but finally he was killed in the South India, he was killed in South India at Tamil Nadu, at Tamil Nadu. 
they, that area is called as Sandhom. At present, that area is called as Sandhom. This was only information knowing from the Parthians. This was only information knowing the Parthians. After the Parthians, next important rulers were the Kushanas. Foreign rulers were the Kushanas. Kushanas. Kushanas, they belongs to the Yuchi tribe. Yuchi tribe. And they were driven out from China by the Manchu rulers. Manchu kings, they were driven out. They were driven out by the Manchu rulers. And they came to India. They settled at northwestern India. They settled at northwestern India. That is Afghanistan, Pakistan, up to Madhura. They ruled up to the Madhura. Founder of this dynasty. Founder of this dynasty. Vima Katpaisis. Vima Katpaisis was founder of this dynasty. And uh, important ruler or main ruler or uh, greatest ruler of this dynasty Kanishka Kanishka was the greatest ruler of this dynasty last king of this dynasty Devaputra sorry Devabhuti I am very sorry Vasudeva sorry last king of this dynasty was Vasudeva Last king Vasudeva. And this ruled from, initially they ruled from the Peshawar. Peshawar. Or this is also called as Purushapura. Later they ruled from Mathura. Later they ruled from Mathura. These are the important points to know about the Kushanas. Kushanas they belong to the Yuchi tribe. And they were driven out from China from, by the Manchu kings. They settled in India at northwestern frontier provinces. They ruled up to Madhura from Afghanistan to Madhura. And the founder of that dynasty was Vima Katpaisis. Greatest king of that dynasty Kanishka. Last king Vasudeva. Their capital was Peshawar or Purushapura and also Madhura. This is important points to know about the Kushanas and the early Kushana rulers, early Kushana rulers were the Vima Katpaisis and Kuzula Katpaisis. Vima Katpaisis, Vima Katpaisis and Kuzula Katpaisis. These two are the early kings of this dynasty. Vima Katpaisis, he defeated Sekas. And he extended kingdom up to Madhura. He defeated Sekas and extended kingdom up to Madhura, Mathura area. Not Madhura, Mathura area. That is in UP. These two rulers, we are knowing only from the coins. These two names are knowing only from the coins. They followed Hinduism and Buddhism. They struck coins on image of the Lord Shiva, they struck Lord Shiva image on the coins. And they were called as, they also got the titles like uh, Sarva Lokeshwara, Sarva Lokeshwara, that is uh, Lokeshwara means Ishwara, Maheshwara. They also bore the titles on the name of Lord Shiva. Followed Saivism. Struck the names of the Lord Shiva on the... Even they also struck the bull. Bull. That is Nandi. Also struck on the coins. After these two. Kuzula Katpaisis. The son of the Kuzula Katpaisis was Kanishka. Kanishka, he was a great ruler of this dynasty. Kanishka. He was a great king of the 
this dynasty ruled from 72 to 102 nearly 30 years he ruled for 30 years in 78 AD he started Seca era this we are following as our Indian calendar Seca era Indian calendar follows the Seca era suppose according to the according to the in English calendar we are in 2021 minus 78 this is uh, 3 this is 4 we are in 1943 44 according to the Seca era Seca era is considered as the Indian calendar in 1957 after the independence we considered it as a <coughs> Indian calendar he ruled from Peshawar he ruled from Peshawar. Later he shifted capital from Peshawar to Madhura. Peshawar to Madhura. He constructed according to the according to the Kalhanas Rajatarangini. Kalhana wrote Rajatarangini. According to this book, Kalhanas Rajatarangini, he constructed Kanishkapura. Kanishkapura. Kanishka was constructed Kanishkapura according to the Rajatarangini. And according to the Alberuni, Alberuni who wrote Taukiki Hind, Alberuni wrote Taukiki Hind, he came to India along with uh, Muhammad of Ghazani. This book speaks about 11th century AD. 11th century AD according to this book according to this book uh, Alberuni says that he constructed uh, one Buddhist Chaitya one Buddhist Chaitya at Purushapura that is Peshawar Buddhist Chaitya was constructed by the Kanishka at Peshawar the Kanishka he defeated Panchavo Kanishka defeated uh, Panchavo Panchav. He was Chinese army general. And uh, occupied. He defeated Panchavo and occupied Kashgar, Yarkhand, Kashgar, Yarkhand, Khotan. These three areas were occupied from the China after defeating the Panchavo. He occupied these three areas from China. This question asked earlier. This question is also asked earlier in the examinations. What are the kingdoms? Which of the following is not occupied from China? And they gave these three and another one. Like that you can guess the question. And Kanishka was first Indian emperor who invaded on the China. That also you have to remember. And there was a silk route from there was a silk route from China to Rome. This, this silk route, China to Rome silk route was uh, dominated. That is, he became supreme of the silk route. He collected taxes from the silk route. And during his period, Kanishka period, he conducted fourth Buddhist council. He conducted the fourth Buddhist council. Held at Kashmir. Kundalavana in the Kashmir, President Vasumitra. This we already discussed in the Buddhist uh, Buddhism. Fourth Buddhist Council held at Kundalavana in Kashmir. Kundalavana in Kashmir. President Vasumitra. Vasumitra was the president. In the Fourth Buddhist Council. Buddhism divided into two groups, Mahayana, two completely two sects, Mahayana and Hinayana. Completely two sects, that is uh, Mahayana and Hinayana. That is one thing. And he sent Buddhist monk. He sent Buddhist monk to the China. Kasyapa Gotra, that is uh, called as Kasyapa Matanga. Kasyapa Matanga. A Buddhist monk was sent to the China for the propagation of Buddhism by Kanishka. 
same like asoka asoka he sent uh, sangamitra and mahendra to the foreign countries for the propagation of buddhism same like that kanishka he sent to kasyapa matanga to the china for the propagation of buddhism so that's why he was called as second asoka he did the same like asoka that's why he was second asoka and he followed mahayana buddhism he was follower of the mahayana buddhism kanishka was followed of the mahayana buddhism and during his period he maintained different scholars different scholars were worked under the kanishka like vasumitra mahavibhasa shastra vasumitra he wrote mahavibhasa shastra mahavibhasa shastra after this vasumitra next to ashvagosha ashvagosha wrote buddha charita kotu poita ashvagosha he wrote buddha charita and also saundarananda saundarananda according to some evidences according to some evidences kanishka he invaded on magadha and he brought ashvagosha from magadha he brought ashvagosha a scholar from the magadha and during his period his court physician charaka charaka was court physician of the kanishka charaka wrote charaka samhita it was a book on ayurvedic medicine charaka samhita some evidences reveals that some evidences reveals that even susruta was also lived in his court susruta wrote susruta samhita susruta samhita susruta was the first surgeon in the world who can who made surgery first surgeon in the world susruta these three were lived in these four people were lived in the court of the kanishka after the kanishka his son haviska ruled after the kanishka haviska ruled haviska haviska he followed bhagavatism haviska followed bhagavatism bhagavatism that is a ten incarnation of lord vishnu and he issued coins but he issued coins on the name of kartikeya kartikeya that is kumara swami son of kumara swami son of lord shiva according to the mathura inscription mathura inscription says that haviska he established haviska established a fund for the offering food fund to offer food for the poor people every day offering food for the poor people established a fund by the haviska like that that was important sub the haviska last king of this kushana dynasty last king vasudeva vasudeva was the last king of kushana dynasty and this is about the this is about post mauryan period foreign kingdoms those who ruled we discussed indo greeks sekas parthians kushanas regarding this the most important thing is founder of the dynasty greatest ruler of the dynasty capital of the dynasty and the last king if known the last king okay this is about post mauryan period today we completed the post mauryan period in the next video we are going to discuss about the guptas after the after the satavahana sorry after the mauryans the next important kingdom next important empire was established in india by the guptas that we will discuss in the next video okay good luck